I, l- I love the premise of this show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about smart, smart shit. shit. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of brilliant idiotness. Now, um, by the time y'all see this video, you're going to wonder why I'm dressed like this. Okay? Yeah, that's right. It's clearly because it's Halloween, people. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I have been getting set up all day because I was at Breakfast Club early this morning, only person in a goddamn costume. And Andrew told me he was dressing up. Well, no, Taylor, but... I, yeah, I thought we were... Yeah, I thought we were dressing up, and then I didn't. That's on me. Taylor's dressed as Bruno Mars. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Show him, Taylor. Show him. So, I'm see. a leader, door open. <laughs> what are you? I'm Bruno Mars. A You're a ringleader. I'm Oh, from, she, she's the ringleader you. of the Universe Soul yeah, yeah, yeah. Circus. <laughs> no, the Universe Soul Circus was wild. They oh, used to dude. do that for real. They I just to... thought of a good one, but I can't say. So, the Universe Soul Circus used to do that. They used to put, uh, they used to dress dogs up as lions. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> they, <did. laughs> they used to dress dogs up as pit bulls. So you on brand. You on brand. How was your weekend, Schultzy? Mm. Yesterday was your B day. My B day. Happy Born Day. Thank you, man. I think birth birthdays are stressful. Why? I don't know. I, I mean, I've been thinking about it. It's a, it's a weird, yeah, it's a weird time. I mean, it seems like a, yeah, it's a weird time. Why? I don't know. I, I had a lot of anxiety around my birthday. Really? Yeah. You're getting another year older and you got a lot more responsibilities now. And I think it's probably hitting you. And Lord have mercy. I'm a fucking adult. Yeah. Yeah. You're knocking on 40, bro. Where you at now? Yeah. I'm 39 years old. Ooh. Yeah. I think there's definitely like age as a component. I think it's also like, uh, it's the only day a year where there's like an expectation of treatment like every other day go every you know what i'm saying like every other day there's no expectation of treatment right but on your birthday for whatever reason there's an expectation of people reaching out or saying something to you and i know it's completely arbitrary and irrational and i'm not like a i try not to be like sensitive about these things but i found myself getting caught up in it like oh did this person wish me happy birthday i'm like who gives a fuck like People are busy. They have their own lives. They're doing these things. But it was weird to have that kind of anxiety. Or I don't know anxiety, but like um, almost potential letdown, you know? And that doesn't happen to me with any other day. I know exactly what you mean. And it's the weirdest thing. It's weird how the human brain works, right? Because I I feel like I'm very low maintenance. Like I I, I would rather do for people. You know what I'm saying? Than actually be the person getting things done to them right like it it just makes me uneasy like i even spoke to my therapist about this like um receiving joy you know what i mean or letting people do things for you like she she broke it down about how you know it's like trust issues and i don't want to you know i i don't i don't i i don't want to be disappointed by people you know what i mean yeah 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 because you have expect you you shouldn't have any expectations for anybody yeah right and you shouldn't expect you from other people so it's just like i would rather be the person showing the love than receiving it yeah but it's weird right because you, you say me. that until you don't get it. You disappointed me. You didn't come to my birthday. I sent you a bottle of wine, though. Well, you're supposed to do that and come to my birthday. <laughs> it's, it's not one or the other. <laughs> but what's interesting about that is... But but that's unfair because you have your life and you have the things that you need to do. No, I'm just scared of them all. It's just straight. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's just literally like, I want to go to show to the birthday, but it's at the mall. But it's, it's at a wave pool that I rented out that's a private... Well, you didn't say that. You didn't add all of that. You did not say private. You just said, I'm doing it at the, the surf place at this the mall. Guy. You did not say that. This you, guy. Now you're speaking but, my language. But here's here. But here's a perfect example where it's just like, I can't let, like narcissism is the world revolves around you and everybody should drop everything for you. Mm-hmm. And then. That's not narcissism. I don't believe that. Uh, well, we can debate that. But mm-hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say is like, but this is a perfect, it's like, Birthdays almost like lend themselves to your narcissism. It's like an excuse for narcissism when you should have the same. I should go. No, people have things to do in their lives. Like you had to do something. You had, had my till screening. You had yeah. your till screening. Like there are other things you had to do. So there's this moment where I'm like, oh, I really wish my friend made it happen for this day. But at the same time, Shit, now you're making me feel bad. See what the fuck? <laughs> see what I'm saying? God well, I'm just trying to express how I feel. No, you now you're making me feel fucking bad. feel yeah. bad. No, but you, but you see what I'm saying? Because it's like this. If it was just like, yo, well, let's go surfing on a Saturday, right? Then and you couldn't come, you'd be like, yeah, people are busy. But there's you have one birthday a year, so all of a sudden you start putting this pressure, like, oh, if people really fuck with me, they would sacrifice for this day. When it's not fair, people have their lives and they have other things that they need to do, and that's how I treat shit. I miss people's birthday all the time. 
Now you feel bad. Mm-hmm. I do. But my goal isn't for you to feel bad. My I goal think it is was. to yeah. take it. I think that was your sole goal. Well, I, it feels better you feel bad. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel a little bit better. No, but it's real though. It's like, yo, because you 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 say to yourself, oh, I don't care if that person wishes me happy birthday, but then it's like, why the fuck didn't that person wish me happy birthday? Yeah. <laughs> you know Dude, it's I'm so mean? weird. And there's like a sliding scale of the things people do to wish you happy birthday that like make you feel good based on your expectations of them. Like if it's a, if somebody who like I'm not very close to goes above and beyond, my expectation was so low, they went above and beyond. I'm like so touched and like blown yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. But it's unfair that the people I'm closest to have to do something huge for me to be blown away. That's unfair. I think birthdays are important though because I think we're all so tender on our birthdays. Like how you're feeling oh, right yeah, now. Yeah. I never felt like this when I was younger about birthdays. Not at all. The older I get, I'm crying on birth. I'm, li- I'm, I'm not even. I'm like literally like in tears, and like I really do appreciate my people's birthdays, right? Like people yeah. that I love and I care about, and I think it is important to acknowledge. Like, hey, I know this is your day. Happy born day, and 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 not just because of a social media post. Like, nah, man, send some flowers. Yeah, send a bottle of wine. You know what I mean? Put some thought into writing a little card and just letting them know. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yo, they appreciate it. You know, and then then yeah. you know you feel away too because it's like. Well, damn, did they receive my bottle of wine? Because he didn't acknowledge it. Yeah. So does he not like wine? Does his wife not like no, wine? No, no, I like the bottle of wine. It was a weird bottle, too. What was it? I don't know. It was like it's some weird <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was, I just, no, I it was just, called like Prisoners or something. It was somebody like wrapped in chains. I was like, did you get this? at the fuck up. I swear to God. <laughs> I was like, I thought you literally got it from the till screening and then brought it and then like sent it directly there. It was a no. weird choice. I just told my assistant, I said, get him a nice bottle of wine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't believe you. Yeah, I swear <laughs> to God. I had my wife send me a picture of it. It was like shocking. I was like, okay, what's no, going man, on here? But I do think that we should appreciate birthdays because man, we live in a world where yeah. people are waking up dead every day. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And when you talk about 39 years old, I'm 44. Bless. What? You but can, you know what? All the people that didn't make it to 39, bro, that didn't yeah. make it to 44. No, you're right. And it, but it also is cool because it gave me perspective on like what I need to do for people's birthdays. Like this past year, I've been going a little bit harder for people's birthdays. But in the past, like I never put anything on it because I didn't expect nothing from mine. You know what I mean? Well, and the, the finances change, right? That's also true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. 100%. Finances change. But now I know that someone could be feeling that insecurity on their birthday. And I know that I could help them with that yeah, by making right. that effort. I'm know? telling you right now, I know I feel insecurity on my birthday. Why? I don't know. I don't know why at the, t- at the tender age of 40 Because people plus, could let you down. It ain't, it's not even just about the people. It's the fact that this is we're all getting older. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, this yeah. shit is not stopping for nobody. Yeah, like, I look yeah, at my yeah. daughter sometimes, and I'm like, yeah, my daughter's 14. That's how I gauge my age now. I gauge my age through. And your children's age. Your children. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, when I first had my daughter, I was 20. Nine. Yeah. I literally turned thirty two days later. Yeah, her birthday is two days before mine. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and so it's like I'm looking at her. The older she gets, the older I'm getting. And I really do think about life. Like now, my 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 perspective is different. Like when I was young, think about how we used to look at like thirty and forty. Like, damn, that's old as shit. Yeah. But now I'm looking at sixty somethings. I'm really looking at Steve Harvey and like, I right, Steve sixty five. His kids are twenty something. That's fly to yeah, me. Some yeah. of his kids work with him. You know what I mean? Like. That's what I'm looking at now. But I think that that's why it's so important to have kids. And I say this as someone who doesn't have kids yet, but hopefully keep nothing soon. You know what I mean? Your keep boy's out here. But, uh, but like kids allow you to access, uh, you know, the, 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 the childhood playfulness yeah, yeah. that you need to access as an adult. <laughs> they allowed you to like, they, I imagine they allow you to like retap in and, uh, they, I don't know, they give you this, like, uh, I don't know, this purpose. Like, even look at, like, Halloween. We're all dressed up. You I'm know? dressed as fucking Sting. Yeah. You know why? Because I grew up Jehovah Witness. Yeah. So I never got to celebrate yeah. Halloween. Yeah. And now I'm 44 years old. <laughs> Bro. Wearing all the Halloween costumes I, I would have wore if I could have afforded them and if I was celebrated Halloween. I was Black Panther one year. Yep. I was Iron Man one year. Yep. Now I'm goddamn Sting from the WWE. Yep. I you was, know? I was having this conversation with uh, Jordan Peterson. You know who Jordan Peterson is? Yeah, he made uh, Get Out. In, in <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Some of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but we, he was talking about that, like, uh, and we were talking about something like, what's the absence of power? It's play. And then we have this discussion about, like, the importance of, of play, right? And uh, I think as humans, it allows us to prepare ourselves for the harsh things of life. Yeah. Like, Halloween is playing with death. 
in its real inception, it's death. Everybody says that. Is that true? 100%. Like this idea okay. you dress up as Sting is new. Right back in the day, it's like you're a skeleton, you're a zombie, you're all these figures that have already passed. And I think it's our safe way to play with the idea that people die, our loved ones die, the people we care most about die. And in life, we constantly do that, right? We prepare ourselves, like even with humor, humor is a great way to talk about some of the most difficult things in life. Absolutely. And it prepares us for dealing with those fucking difficult things. We're drawn to this. Like even when you spar somebody in boxing, it's preparing for the fight. Yeah. You know, like even like flirting with a girl, you're using play to go a little bit into a territory that's like naughty, but yeah. as long as it's playful, it's okay. Yeah. If you're just like hitting on a girl all aggressive, she's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, but if yeah. you know how to play, all of a sudden she's having fun too. Better have a joke. All right. I was I was reading something or watching something. And they were talking about Halloween, and it's, you know, it's, it's not just Halloween in America. It's like all over the world, they have these like Days of the Dead. Yeah. Like in uh, Mex- New Mexico, they have yeah. the uh, no Mexico, Me- Mexico, Mexico, right? They yeah, have yeah. The, the dead. The, what is it? The, Dia de los Muertos. Whatever the fuck. That's you what just had it. Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like they do that. It's almost like a purge. Yeah. Like you know, they don't go so far as committing all of these crimes, but it's yeah. just like yo, they, you got to lean into your dark side, lean into your your shadow side for the day. Yeah. Get it out. I, listen, I enjoy it. We're drawn to it. It allows us to be brave in a safe environment, right? And we need that because we need to be brave in life. So we got to practice being brave. Yeah. You made me think of something too when you were talking about the parents. It's like, man, what were our parents going through that they did not play at all? <laughs> but <laughs> my parents didn't play. I'm yeah. I'm still 18 yeah. in my mind. Yeah. So I'm still, and maybe it's because of the, co- the culture is kind of like similar because like even though my you know, my oldest is 14. Yeah. I don't think there's ever been a time in our history where you've had a culture, which is hip hop, which is kind of like there's no age gap to it. Like my th- these kids are watching Khaled on social media. And Khaled is playful. Yes. These kids are wearing Jordans and still Yeezys, <laughs> even though they might be becoming a symbol of hate. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. they're still wearing these things. So it's like we got so many things in common or the music. Yeah. Like if I'm walking around the house saying, oh, you think you thought I was feeling you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. My daughter is telling me, stop, yeah. dad. Yeah. Because that's what the kids in her school are singing. Yeah. So it's just like, there's still a, like a, a, a connective tissue that I don't feel like we had with our parents. I think, yeah, that's why like our parents' generation was a bunch of alcoholics. <laughs> right? Because they came back from Vietnam and, and there was no play anymore. They just saw absolute atrocities nonstop. And yeah, it was like yeah. one of the worst things I've ever and experienced. It ain't shit funny. There is yeah. nothing to laugh about. I mean, civil rights movement. Imagine what oh, your folks man. are going through at that time. It's like a horrible, horrible experience. How do you God, play in that? Damn. But, man, you're not lying, bro. but if you look at like certain damn. generations, there was a lot of play. Man, you know, I got an aunt who's 80 years old. Uh, my aunt died. And I remember uh, last summer. They, her and my aunt, my uh, my other aunt and my mom were having a conversation and she was like, I don't know nothing about no integration. You know what I mean? <laughs> she was, oh no, she said, I don't know nothing about no, which was it? Which was, Segre- I don't know, yeah, I don't know nothing about no integration. Yeah. Because like, her yeah. whole time in school was segregation. Segregated, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. damn, can you imagine that? Yeah. Like, and when you ask them what has changed, they like, nothing. Yeah. Because they're already used to being in their own spaces. I, yeah, I always wondered that, like, you know how like black people have made their food so delicious despite it being like not the most desirable parts of the food yeah right mm-hmm. that's where soul food comes from right mm-hmm. do you think like the the black water fountains were were like fire like <laughs> nah, the water, if I, I don't, that's a great question i, <laughs> like, I, I never <laughs> thought about that but that makes a lot of in fucking there. sense there might be kool-aid coming like you don't know exactly what was coming out of that, that makes a lot of sense bro <laughs> i'm just saying black people have Found no, a way I, 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 to I, take whatever they've what got and, I know and make sound, it better. No, I know it sounds like a joke, but I get what you're saying because I'm sure the black water fountains weren't as good. But so I'm sure there was something did a, they, they did, did a thing. like yeah, like put a mint on their tongue, something. I, I guarantee, guarantee, it. I guarantee, guarantee. I put I put the water in some type of jug and then added like a little bit of sugar to. It. I'm I'm saying I'm serious. I mm-hmm. bet you something like that happened. Mm-hmm. I promise you, they probably took the water home, boiled it, then made it cooler. Who knows? I think so. I've never thought about it. Um, what else happened this weekend, man? You saw the Jake shout Paul fight? To, shout out to Black Excellence, bro. Who? I'm just saying. That's what y'all do. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't stop it. You, know I mean? you cannot stop it. It's, it's impossible you to stop. You definitely can't stop it. Um, did you watch the fight? Do you think that there are white people trying to steal the Black Water Fountain water? 
I think white people have been trying to steal from black people and steal black people forever. You think? Mm-hmm. It's the inception of time. But yes. it, okay, well, we didn't need to go there with it. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> since, but, the, since the inception of time. Yeah. Did you watch the fight? Uh, I did watch the fight. What Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I thought man. it was a great fight. Was your, did you pay four ninety nine for it? I paid 60 for it. I went to my cable provider and I bought Showtime <laughs> pay-per-view and that shit said $4.99. Yes, so I ordered it twice. I ordered it downstairs and upstairs because <laughs> my wife and sister-in-law was downstairs watching movies, so I was upstairs watching the fight, and I paid four ninety nine on both TVs. Yeah, I don't think you did, bro. I don't know, but I took a screenshot of the goddamn picture, so when the bill comes, yeah, and it I think says you whatever signed it says, up for Showtime. Yes, no, I and got you Showtime. Also paid for it. No, I got Showtime. All right. I got Showtime. All right. Um, but I thought the fight was amazing, and then I actually thought Jake was going to do it. I posted about it. I thought he was going to. I mean, like, not only does he knock him down in the eighth. But he was the dominant force in the fight. There were times where Silva was putting on pressure. Yeah. But an interesting thing about this fight, if you watch, Silva didn't feel comfortable exchanging at distance. So he put on pressure and he kind of crowded him and he was throwing like uppercuts. And the reason he did that, I'm assuming, is because he was concerned about getting hit. So he wanted to crowd Jake's punches so he didn't have the opportunity to bang, uh, to, to bust out that big right hand. It did seem like for a moment he wasn't afraid of uh, Paul's power at all. It, no, for the first few rounds, he wasn't afraid uh, because he got caught by some big shots and didn't mm-hmm. go down. That being said, he wasn't exchanging a distance. And Silva's a guy, if you watch his fights when he was in MMA, he was beautiful exchanging a distance, mm-hmm. punching, moving. And I just think that he thought it was too costly. I mean... I want Paul to work on his hugs, though. His, his hugs look a little too sensual. What do you mean? Like, they look intimate. Like, it, it wasn't like a boxing hug. It was like a real hug. Like, oh, what, I miss at you. The Happy end? birthday. No, the whole time. Oh, like, like the, the, uh, the whole like thing. Like, was putting pressure on him, and he would try to hold him. And look I mean, like that's a real, his hero, like, oh, bro. Imagine hey. you were fighting your hero, and you had the opportunity to hug him just a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course you're going to yeah, do Paul, it. I, you know what, though? I don't want... I don't know if Jake Paul needs to fight a real boxer. Yo, I, I, tell, I tell Jake this. I'm like, bro... Stop trying to win over the hearts of like the people who are your haters anyway. Yeah. You never, it don't matter if you beat Canelo, they're going to say, oh, Canelo got off Stop. the steroids. I can't, and even can't, believe, I can't even believe that's the example you use. My point that's is, an extreme example. my point is he could beat the best boxer ever and people are going to find an excuse as to why he did it, right? No now matter you what beat, he you does. You beat Canelo, you got to give Paul his props. Bro. But I'm, I'm, I know what you're saying. They'll yeah, be like, well, go fight given- somebody, go fight, uh, T- Terrence Crawford exactly. now, then. Uh, go, exactly. Go fight Bud now. Exactly. I get what They're going to say, yo, you're 200 pounds. He's 150 pounds. Yeah. Why are you fighting him? So my point is stop trying to win over the haters and then just keep enraging them. Fight like, for example, Silva has had boxing matches. He beat Chavez Jr. So he beat a legit boxer. Silva yeah, yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. And then he just easily beat Silva and dropped him in the process. So it's like what I think of, I'm doing for you is just taking the biggest money fights and then yes. get in the fuck out of there while you still got some brain cells left. I like Jake. Uh, I mean, I just like Jake because he's a good showman. Oh, great. You know what I mean? I mean, even getting in the ring at the end of the fight and, and uh, calling out Canelo and Nate Diaz. It's amazing. I want Nate Diaz, who's a bitch. He tried to come into my locker room. He tried to cause some shit. And then he always leaves the fucking arena. So, Nate Diaz, stop being a bitch and fight me. And Canelo... You too. You too, Canelo. You guys said, oh, you, you can't beat someone. You can't beat a striker. You can't beat a legend like Anderson Silva. I just did it. So why can't I beat Canelo? Fuck y'all. I mean, it, it just keeps things going because it makes everybody be like, you can't beat such such, which he can't. Canelo's fucking you up, Jake. I'm letting you know that right now, Jake. So stop. Oh, stop. Could you bro. stop right now? How Could many stop? How many guys he got to beat before people go, ah, hey, he's good. I'm not saying he's not good. I'm just saying you're not beating Canelo Alvarez, one Listen, of the greatest boxers of all time. On paper, I 100% agree with that statement. Okay? 100% agree with that statement Sleep. on paper. Nap time. Steph Curry. Yes. Okay. Logan crying front row, <laughs> ready to put on gloves and come in there and defend his brother if he gets in there with Canelo. 100%. Build the wall. That being what said. Canelo would do to Jake Paul. Are you crazy? <laughs> I agree 100% on paper. That being said, I thought that Floyd Mayweather w- would knock out Logan within a few rounds, and then Logan went the entire fight with Floyd, and Floyd couldn't hurt Logan at all. I never, so, th- I never thought, I never thought, Floyd would well, you know what? I did think Floyd would probably knock Logan out, but the the, the size difference. Oh, now we're talking about size. No, 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 now but, we're talking but, about age. That's what happens every day. It's like I don't know if I ever said Floyd would knock him out though. I said Floyd would TKO is what I was thinking. No, nah, I thought just on points. I just thought he would finesse him, which he did. He, Floyd fought like Floyd. Mm. And that's what I was trying to say when you're a big guy 
and you think you can get in that ring with one of these dudes? Like, these are boxers. They're skilled. They move around like you can't touch them. Yes, was it impressive Logan lasted, I guess, eight rounds with Floyd? Sure, on paper. But I think we're moving the goalposts, bro. It's I, like, it's, it's, this is what, this is what I've seen people do every single time. It's like, he's going to get demolished. And then he beats him. And then it's like, uh, well, he's old. Uh, well, he's an MMA guy. Uh, well, he's this. It, it's it's constant moving the goalposts. At a certain point, you're going to have to say the dude, well, at least with Jake, hasn't lost. And it has only been close once. This, and then, this one right here. No, the Tyron one. I think the first Tyron fight was closer. First one? Mm. And then so it's only been close once. And then the second time they fought. Slept. Let me ask you a question. Flo Logan is how big? Six, two. Six, two, what? Six. 200 plus. Oh, he's a heavyweight. Yeah. Does Floyd Mayweather beat Anthony Joshua? Anthony Joshua has been boxing as a professional. But that's what I mean. Yeah. So somebody that size who actually boxes. Logan's a vlogger. Floyd's not even getting in the ring with. You yeah, know what no, I'm no, saying? No, no, no. 100%. I, I, what I'm saying weight matters. What I'm trying to say is nobody was saying that before the fight. I never thought Logan had a chance. Yeah, we can go back and rewind the tape. No, no, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. but you hear what I'm saying? It's like after the fight, all the excuses come in. Before the fight, oh, the peanut gallery is going, his... oh, it's going to be yeah. over. You about to take this guy's head off. Myself included. I was like, there's no way. Yeah, I never thought I never thought Floyd would knock Logan out only because we haven't seen Lo Floyd knock out anybody in forever. Fair enough. <laughs> like, so, Fair enough. I, so that never was my mindset. Fair enough. All I'm saying is got to give some credit where credit's due. I'm, listen, I here's the thing. I bought the Jake Paul. Anderson Silva fight for one reason and one reason only. I knew I would be entertained. And it was entertaining. It was entertaining. Like, yeah. it's just that simple for me. Like, I'm not looking, Jake, you have nothing to, I don't know about everybody else. People like me, you don't got nothing to prove. I'm watching you for what you are. Yeah. I am highly entertained yeah. when I see Jake Paul in the ring. I've watched yeah. five Jake Paul fights and I've been entertained for every single one of them. Yeah. Whether it's the knockout or just like the, the anticipation of a oh, man, somebody gonna finally fuck Jacob. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Even yeah. watching the Silver fight, I'm like, oh shit, Silver giving them all he can handle. Yeah, you know that what I mean? second round, I was concerned. The second round, uh, Silver came on hard. The reason I didn't uh, think Silver was gonna win, though, is because when I saw some of the blows he was landing on Jake and Jake was taking them, I'm like, he's all right. And I don't, Jake never looked fatigued. Nope. His cardio looked good. Yeah. It, it's an eight round fight. It's not a 12 round yeah. fight. And also, yeah. I don't know if 12 rounds benefits Silva. He's 47 years old. Yeah, you're right. You yeah. know, I'm curious about this Nate Diaz fight. I'm one, what weight are they going to fight at? Two, Nate has fought guys at 155 and 170. He hasn't fought 185 pound yeah. guys like Jake. I thought Silver was about to kick the shit out of Jake. There was one time when Silver kept doing his leg up like oh, that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, man, yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah, just yeah. off muscle memory and yeah, reflex, throw it. that's what Jake got to be concerned about. Yeah, You yeah. fuck around, you're going to get in there with one of them MMA guys and they're going to forget they boxing yeah, and they're yeah. going to catch, catch you in the fucking neck yep. and that shit ain't going to be worth it. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you better get back to basketball players. Yeah. Um, Salute to Diddy. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what this means anymore. Diddy what? becomes a billionaire. Okay. I don't know what that means anymore. Well, there's, I don't know what that means anymore because we know. Yeah, it's an so what his, it's an evaluation. I guess his company, Ciroc and Daleon, and you know everything else he got going on. I can't mm -hmm. read that. I'm getting old. What mm -hmm. did that say? According to a new report from former Forbes editor Zach O'Malley, Jay Z is stuck with his spot as the wealthiest hip hop artist in North America with a net worth of 1.5 billion. Earlier this year, Ye was in second place in the list of hip hop's highest earners with 250 million in earnings for 220, 2021. But after his with Adidas came to an abrupt end on account of his anti-Semitic comments, he slipped to third place of net worth. He was reportedly worth $2 billion at one point this year. Now Diddy has the second place spot after trailing behind Ye in the past. Okay, this is what I want to see. Diddy, hip -hop, Diddy is hip-hop's third billionaire with a net worth of $1 billion. His Ciroc partnership with Diego is said to account for the bulk of his wealth, but other assets such as Revolt, and De Leon Tequila have certainly helped. Last year, he made how much? Ninety. Ninety million dollars. I mean, that makes sense. He's in the spirit business. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I mean, a lot. Uh, this is all based off valuations of his company. I mean, you know, salute to Diddy. He he earned it. The yeah. guy's been around forever. He's 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 interesting because he loves Halloween. You can tell it. It's oh, like he lives it. He he made me put on this. Really? But I wasn't going to dress up for Halloween. Yeah. And then I saw Diddy and it was like Diddy was, Diddy was literally the essence of this day. And it yeah. was, and based off, I, I don't know if I read it or saw it, in the, something I was watching this weekend where they was talking about how like 
you know, these days of the dead or these days are like days where you just lean into your shadow, you lean into the dark side and you just express it. He did that with that Joker costume and it looked so freeing. I think, I think, oh, say that again. It just looks so freeing. I think the more strict your identity is in the real world, the more you need Halloween or Burning Man. You know, he goes to Burning Man every year. Oh, wow. You need these places where you can let loose and not be confined. And I think that there is Take a your mask off. Exactly. Yeah. I think there is a rigidity. This is obviously outside perspective, but like there's a rigidity to being a dude in hip hop and a rigidity to being a black person. Right. There's you. If you go outside of the fray, you could be chastised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For anything. For anything. For, for, literally for anything. Like there's a I think it's changed over the years, but I understand what you're you, saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can see why Halloween is this liberating holiday and so is burning man because you get to just act and behave in whatever way the character is yeah you know it's freeing so i can see why he goes all in on something like this listen i enjoyed it i enjoyed watching him please insert when he uh got into it with michael ferguson Yo, what two was bit that about power. it doesn't matter what it was about it was entertaining what i think i think that two bit uh with michael ferguson i don't know if he knew that was did no i don't think he did and i think that he ran i think probably did he ran up on him with Ciroc and De Leon on his breath, you know what I'm saying? And was on his Joker shit. And yeah. Michael clearly not in costume. He's like, man, stop playing with me. And then, and then, so, yeah, yeah. So, so Diddy's like, yo, you got to know who I am. You got to know who the fuck I am. You got to know what costume I'm wearing. I mean, you every can year. tell that he took at least five shots of De Leon and seven shots of Ciroc yo, before he left the house. Yo, he switched he, characters so fast. It was amazing. He bro. went through four. He went from Puff to Love <laughs> to Diddy to the Joker, back to Love. Play, can you play it, Taylor? Oh. Do we got some audio? You know why I love Another reason I, I enjoy Diddy. <laughs> what? There is not a better character in hip hop. Did he gotta be like top five characters ever yeah. in hip hop? And when you there's not a time you gonna meet Diddy and don't get Diddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It don't matter if you've been listening to him since the '90s. The person you think he is on those records is the person you meet even at the tender age really? of 57 years old. Really? How old is Diddy? Diddy's got he's over a half a century. I know that, much. <laughs> but he's always Sean Puffy Combs. Taylor, you asked us. To play it and you don't even have it ready. Yeah, Diddy's fifty-two. Fifty-two. Yeah, that's okay. Well, that's okay. I he's he's just even even if, that right there. You can take that and chop that up and put it on your album later. <laughs> you can take that and put it on your mixtape or on your album later. Yeah. Just those album because like Jada Kiss got this song that I love called um ah oh, man it, it's it's off the last album. And he takes a clip of an uh, Instagram rant that he did. When he was like, you don't hustle, you don't eat. You don't hustle, you don't eat. You think you're going to fucking uh, out-hustle me? Man, I'll never out-hustle me. He's on my comment page saying, damn, did he leave some for the rest of us? Nigga, you don't hustle, you don't eat. You don't hustle, you don't eat, nigga. Hustle harder. You ain't going to never hustle hard as me. Think I do this shit for the money? I do it because what? Why are you so mad, Diddy? I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Giving you the blueprint to get it out here, and you don't want to do what it takes. You want to stay on your Instagram all day, take motherfucking selfies, and you ain't hustling hard? Hustle hard. Hustle. That was just an Instagram rap, but it sounds so good on an album. Yeah, yeah. That right there is going to sound phenomenal on an album. Yeah. Usually when somebody says, do you know who I am? You think they're being a dick. Oh, you got it now, Taylor? Do you know who I am? Bro, for what? Bro, who I am? So in love, so in love, bro. So in love, bro. Yo, 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 bro. So in love. It's tough. Come here, give me a hug, though. You lucky, though, nigga. You lucky. No, I'm really about that. But I love you. And we're together. We're stronger together. You lucky, nigga. Come here. So somebody told him it. Change your vibration. Change your vibration. Change your vibration. When you see your brother, you love Change your vibration. You, nigga. Did nobody tell him it's Diddy yet? Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has that broke character. <laughs> What's up, baby? We we got baby. What's up? What's up? You don't like me? You motherfucker, get to it, nigga. You don't like me? You motherfucking front, get to it, bitch. 
<laughs> don't fucking play with me on Halloween. I'm not, you don't I'm play with me on Halloween. What up, then, nigga? What's up? What up? Fucking come over here and I'll bust your shit. Nah, hey, right, keep it pissing. fucking pussy, man, right. so you don't never keep talk to me like that, nigga. Like that, I'm love, nigga. Keep it I'm gonna tell you something. Don't let them get you out there, man. They're gonna stop giving you your N words money in a minute. Man, you gotta the Why hasn't someone told him it's Diddy? He's taking over my energy. He wanna hurt you. Nah, it's so what did I do to you? Don't do it for this crowd. Don't do it for this crowd. Don't do it for this crowd. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Now Diddy's realizing, oh, you didn't know I was Diddy. So love, so love, bro. So love, bro. Yo, 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 bro. So love. It's fuck. Come here, give me a hug, though. You lucky, though, nigga. Yeah, I don't think he realized it was Puff. But did he? Let me tell you something. Robert Smith, Oprah Winfrey, Bob Johnson, the original black player in this country are disgusted. I'm telling you right now, they are disgusted at you new black people who are getting bees in front of your name. All right. <laughs> there is, there's got to be some billionaire etiquette, right? <laughs> these And it ain't even just the black billionaires. The Elon Musk of the world. Yeah. These new billionaires, man, y'all got to start moving the way OG billionaires used to move. What? How? Why? Why? I just feel like the etiquette was better. The etiquette was different. Maybe they had to behave because the OG billionaires were, you know, doing horrible things to get their money. You think? I think so. Eh, I hear people say that, um... I hear people say that, right? People say like, oh, you got to do the most heinous things in order to make billions no of dollars. No such thing as a billionaire without a little blood on his hands. Right? <sighs> we really believe that? Yes. 100%. Why? Tell me why. Don't give me some... The proof. only way I don't believe it is if... I mean, if, uh, what, what What do you mean by proof? Like, Because like, what, what did a tech guy do other than that's be, the thing. be the a only, genius? So the tech guys... What did an oil guy do other than fucking know where the oil's at? Well, not, I mean, what do you mean, what the oil guy What a family did? generation of oil. Mean, hey, CIA, uh, I think we need a little coup over there in uh, Iraq. They got some oil. Well, what about the oil people like in Texas? Millions of, say again? What about people in America who got, like, Texas got oil right there? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely some shady shit that's going on there, for yeah. sure. I'm just saying, it's like, we say that, oh, you got to have some blood on your hands. Some people just have great ideas. And those ideas... Tech is different because it's all evaluation-based. But any, I think any product, like if you create yeah. a product, like whatever, I mean, I'm sure they're not billionaires, but let's say Coca-Cola. Yeah. You made Coke. You made a soda. Or, I mean, or, Coca-Cola is definitely billionaires. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah, just like, yeah. I don't think, every, oh, people, the Waltons who made Walmart, like, I don't, I don't think everybody who's made massive amounts of money in this country has done something Well, look at Walmart. Illegal. Like, how many different mom and pop stores did they probably put out of business? Now, I'm not saying that that's blood on your hands, yeah. but you you are literally going into a market, undercutting every store in the market, losing money on products. You're literally seeing how much the other stores there, the mom and pop stores, call, yeah. you're charging less and losing money knowing that they'll go out of business and then you're raising the price. But you don't know the mom and pop's going out of business. You're not, I don't, I don't think you care. No, I'm, I, listen, yeah. I'm not saying this is like, I'm not trying to be like uh, moral about this. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm not trying to be like uh, ethical about this. I'm just saying to extract that much wealth, you're not exactly looking out for everybody. I don't think, we, I don't think any of us are when we're on our path to do what we do. When right. you out here and you're saying you want to be, be the best stand up comic, actually in your mind, you are saying, I'm about to slay all these motherfuckers. Yeah. I'm going to fuck all these people yep. up. I, Maybe you think like that when you're opening, but they opening can eat too. I don't want them to not eat. Is, is that up to you though? No, nah, because because if I'm if I'm them, if I'm the mom and pop, I'm seeing what Walmart's doing. And I'm saying, okay, how do we adjust? To, I'm not. To survive? I'm not looking at every other comic's touring schedule and going, yo, book me the same weekend as that guy. I'm a fucking <laughs> bury him. Like you know what I mean? Like I don't do that at Schultz all. Is like, a liar. Nah, <laughs> he this guy, Alex. Nah, nah, I, don't, I don't. I don't think he does it. I, 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 I've watched him do it. Do what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dave Chappelle dropped a comedy special. Yeah, I didn't do it. And oh, Andrew with him. said, "I'm gonna drop me on stage freestyling." Oh yeah. I know it's funnier. But whose idea was that? that was, who was Alex? Yeah. Oh wow, wow. I know Rob was gonna fuck you up. It's gonna be a tag team match between, <laughs> between Andrew Schultz and Alex Media versus yeah. Dave Chappelle and Donnell. But Rollins. that's different. That's just that's just me being nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a that's a different thing. That's just me being nice. That's completely different. What it happens though, like you know, sometimes artists want to drop their albums on the same day. Yeah. You know, I don't know if these big businesses are necessarily doing that. I think their mind state is, I'm just coming to fuck the market up. 
And it's not like I'm aiming directly at the mom and pops. I'm aiming at everybody. Like I'm, I'm establishing, I'm establishing this business. We want to be number one in the space. It is what it Nobody's is. Nobody's pure. Nobody's hundred percent, hundred percent right in, in anything. We're all involved in That's some right. fucked up shit. If you go down the production line long enough. That being said, well, capitalism. Yeah, right? exactly. Just in general, absolutely. Capitalism in this country is a, a fucked or in up any system. Country. It's but, not, it's not, a, not fucked up, but it is. If you paid people what they were worth, you wouldn't make any money. And that's just Ooh, the reality. I got to I got to credit our. See, I'm getting better. I'm not gonna say it, bro. You are sweating, dude. It's because I'm, I'm trying to commit to this costume, and it's white sweat for I'm some to reason commit. too. It's like, is there paint on you? No, can, give me. Can you give me a napkin, Taylor? Please. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. It's right there. It's right there. I'm trying to commit to this costume. Yeah, I'm trying to commit to this costume. Yeah, yeah. But Taylor, Taylor bypassed the thick hand towels to give me Kleenex. No, the hand. Can He's I, worried can about your towels? skin. Thank you, Taylor. I started to say our fat friend, but I'm not going to say it. Oh, my God. Van Lathan, our guy, who we love, right? I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it, but I'm not going to say it. What? Yeah. What? Poor Van. What? I'm just trying to motivate him. Shout out to Van, bro. I'm just trying to motivate him. Van, you got this, bro. Van said he's not doing the podcast until so he lose some weight, bro. That, that, that is probably... Because he knows how our audience is. That's a smarter idea <laughs> if I've ever heard one. That is, you know, he's not worried about the audience, bro. He's worried about one guy. You. Charlemagne. No. You. Yes. You. I support you. your weight loss journey, Van. You. you got this, my brother. Trust me. You've done it before. You will do it again. Maybe. A little older now. <laughs> this guy's an animal, bro. <laughs> this guy is an nah, I love Van. animal. But Van said something this weekend, and I said to Van, Van, this might be the most brilliant thing I've ever heard you saying. Van's brilliant, but this might be the most brilliant thing I've ever heard Van say. And I know I'm not going to break it down as eloquent as him, but he was breaking down the difference between value and worth. Ah. Nobody can ever pay you what you're worth. Like your okay. worth is, is infinite. Like okay. think about LeBron James when he played for the Cavaliers. LeBron James, when they said he left Cleveland, the, the economy of the city went down. Yeah, for the sure. Cleveland Cavaliers could never pay LeBron what he's worth, yeah. but they can pay him the highest value for a player of his caliber yeah. based off the business that they're in. Yeah. That's why they have the max contract. Yeah, for you sure. know what I mean? And I think a lot of times we all sit down and we have these conversations like, I know my worth, I know my worth. Yeah, but do you know your value? Mm. Do you know what your value is the said company you work for? Do you know your value to the industry you're in? But there's a difference between value and worth. And I think that little that little change in language will save a lot of people a lot of disappointment. Because mm. what I'm seeing right now is everybody having these know your worth conversations, know your worth conversations, know your worth conversations, when the reality is you should know your value to whatever industry you're, industry in. you're in. That's interesting. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if you go in there with worth, like you're going to always feel disappointed. You're going to always ah. feel like you're not getting what you're worth because they could never truly pay you what you're worth. But, but as long they, as, yeah, yeah. But yeah. they can pay you the top value. Yeah. Right? They can pay you what, what, your, what, your, what your value is. So, I, I mean, like I said, Van can break it down way better than me, but I just think there's a difference between value and worth. And I'm watching a lot of people leave a lot of money on the table because they're not getting paid what they're worth. Right, right. And they're watching what's happening with other people. And listen, two things happen in situations when, when people do deals and stuff they lie fudge the numbers a little bit mm. you know what i'm saying and then other times they really do get what they say they got but that's their value to whatever can you speak on company what you're they're talking in. about i'm just talking in general like oh. it's just a, it's just a, a broad but they, 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 that's their value to whatever company they're affiliated right. with or whatever industry they're in that might not be your value yeah, you might think you're worth a hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. but the industry that it, you're in, that is paying for your services, might only be able to profit off of you if they're paying you fifty million dollars. So, are they going to lose fifty million dollars by paying you what you believe you're worth? Yeah, they're probably yeah, not yeah. going to do it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I yeah. don't think people understand that. It's still a, even if, as I'm paying you, I still have a business to run, mm. and I can't bankrupt my business. Yeah, paying you yeah you know uh what you think you're worth because mm -hmm. the reality is it's not about your worth it's about your value that's why it's yeah. very important to know everything know how much you know uh uh ad revenue 
Yeah. Not only your 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 show might be bringing in or your station might be bringing in. Are yeah. you what are you what are you responsible for ad revenue wise? Yeah. When you can factor that in, you know, then you'll you probably know what your value should be. Mm. And look at what's going on in the industry that you're in. What is everybody else that's on your level or or your caliber of of show or personality getting? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Let's pay some bills, man. Let's do it, bro. Salute to Squarespace. Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time, okay? You got to have a website nowadays. I actually think that um, websites are going to make a huge, huge comeback, especially with everything that's going on with social media nowadays. It's very, very shaky. I don't think you motherfuckers is going to pay to be on Twitter. What am I saying? Of course you're going to pay to be on Twitter. We'll, get, we'll talk about that in a minute. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue screen for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, and newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every send. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Let's get back to the show. Church announcement, Schultzy. Um, what you got? Nothing, man. Nothing, man. man Talk to me. What the fuck, man? How you going to pay for renting out these goddamn surfing places if you don't fucking get back on the road bro yeah i'm working on it i'm getting back up on stage so that's been fun but it's got to be uh you know you can't rush you can't rush greatness greatness man nah, i'm with you it's got to be and purity like i think there's a lot of people that just rush it back out because they want to be back on tour or do or fulfill the desire that kind of stuff whereas like i want to make something special yeah. that is better than the last thing that you saw Every time you go, you come see it, it's got to be the best show ever. So there's pressure that comes with that. But like for me, I don't want to just make something an hour. I want to really make sure that each piece and bit kind of blends together. And that takes time. So in the meantime, you're just doing your movie thing. So yeah, filming, yeah, filming this movie. And uh, I go back out there tonight. I told you uh, yeah. I was, I was, I was, uh, where was I at? I was at, oh, Ad Week. I, I did a panel for Ad Week a couple yeah. of weeks ago. And uh, one of the agents there, um, my man Oren, he was like, yeah, man. He said, man, I, you know, I, I know somebody who's, uh, uh, I guess, I don't know if he's working on the movie that you're doing. He was like, he's saying, show to steal in the whole movie. Nah, nah, I promise nah, you that's nah, what he nah, said nah. to me. I mean, that's cool, man. That'd that's be really cool. That'd, that'd be, be really cool, me. but yeah. But uh, that's big. Um, uh, every Thursday night, 1130, hell of a week on Comedy Central. Uh, make sure you tune in this Thursday. Uh, I forgot who's going to be on the show this week. I'm sorry. You had a good one last week. Last week was T.I., Tommy Davidson, and uh, Kristen, uh, Kristen Soltis Anderson from CNN, and a uh, one-on-one -on -one conversation with my man Stephen Colbert. That was, that was fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, every Thursday night, 1130 on Comedy Central, you can stream us on Paramount Plus to catch up on all the episodes. And uh, make sure you go grab Summer of 85. Chris Moreau is in here right now. Make sure you get Summer yeah. of 85. That's our latest uh, project that we put out on SBH Audible. That's me and Kevin Hart's company on Audible. It tells the story of the summer of 1985 in Philadelphia with the bombing of the MOVE organization as well as um, the Live Aid concert that happened in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So so check that out. Uh, Twitter. We could talk. I, say, I have who you going to have. Oh, you got who I have? Let me see who I got this week on Hell of a Week. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Bruno Mars. <sighs> oh, this week we have, oh my God, Donnell Rollins. How, why do we book Donnell? Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Can we change the booking? Jesus Christ. Nice to have you, Solar Dad, but Donnell? <laughs> Just sitting here thinking how I can ruin Donnell's life on yep, national yep, television. Yep. 
what can I do to ruin Donnell's life on national television? <laughs> I will think about it and get back to you. <laughs> right. Can we can we please can we please talk about what everybody's uh, been DMing me and tagging me Let's in for the it. last Let's fucking do it. three days or I'm whatever? I'm sure it has something to do with Kanye West. Yes, it does. Yes. Okay, so a video came out of you, I believe, on Vlad sitting with the worst posture ever on a couch. From it was nine years ago, man. I was you know yeah a different person. Yeah, yeah. That was nine. That was nine <laughs> complexions ago. <laughs> 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 that's, how you, that's how you gotta that's how you you know what's so funny cycle. whenever an old video comes out of some old content yeah. I just go to it if I got a dog face I'm like I don't even, I don't even need to listen I don't even care <laughs> I don't, they right whatever they say they right that was a wild boy right <laughs> okay so now everybody's going saying that like yo Charlamagne was saying the exact same thing he's criticizing Kanye yeah, for calling me a hypocrite they, they, they're now what are your thoughts on that well their exact thing was you know they, they were upset that I called Kanye a Nazi because, you know, he went after black people and Jewish people in the same week. And they're saying that, you know, the, what I said was the same thing. I think that there's a big difference in saying there are a lot of Jewish people who hold powerful, powerful positions in Hollywood in, in, in the music industry. Right. Like me saying that is a fact. That's like that's saying also, a lot of black players in the NBA. Yeah, it's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if I say, hey, you know. There's a lot of Jewish people in Hollywood and uh, the music industry and they control the messaging and, you know, they're responsible for all the negative content that goes out and, you know, they're manipulating the media and this and that. That's where the anti-Semitism comes into play. Yeah. It was, it, Chris, you're, you're, come on, Mr. Why, why am I sitting here having conversations when we have a Jewish man in the room that can explain it better than me? A, well, a well-researched Jewish man who's still wearing masks for no reason? Here we go. Here we go, Chris. It's the Jew minute with Chris Morrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Uh, Jews founded Hollywood as we know it today. And the reason is because uh, there was no film industry in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Jews were shut out of at, were at the time traditional, you know, I don't think they were even called media there, but entertainment. Yeah. And most of the I think a lot of the uh, founders of the Hollywood studio were like furriers, you know, like people who sold furs because at that time mm -hmm. men wear fur hats and fur jackets. And mm -hmm. that was a big thing that Jews were involved in. And they went out to Los Angeles and they started this industry. So from that alone, you know, it makes sense that they're still, you know, well represented in it because right. they essentially started it. I was um, watching an Adam Sandler sketch from SNL back in the day called Hanukkah Hollywood or something like that. Yeah. And the whole sketch was literally based on the large amount of representation of <laughs> <laughs> But when you feel like the only kid in town without a Christmas tree, here's a list of people who are Jewish, just like you and me. But it's okay. I, I don't think there's any issue with having like a large amount of representation. Yeah, I think the, the issue is saying that one, they control the media. Yeah, saying they control every industry in the world and they're responsible for all the evils in the world. Control the banks. The ba yeah, exactly. that's, that's what the anti That type of messaging. But being part of an industry that yeah. they helped start is not bad. That's Nobody right. was. It's like saying like black people starting soul food. It's like, yeah, yeah. you should be overrepresented in soul food. That's right. Huh? <laughs> Well, no, you should. Yeah. I don't know if we are, but we should. But you should be. Yeah, 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 yeah. hundred percent. And also, too, it's like, here's the thing that people keep forgetting. And it's weird, right? But I think Ka Kanye thing, had yeah. a lot of different conversations going on. Yeah. Are we, Kanye threatened. We're, that's that's what the issue is. The DEF CON 3. Well, DEF CON, th tweet. now that's debatable because DEF CON is not about attack. It's about defense. It's but. still a military. It's still ready for war. Yeah, but it's ready for being attacked, not ready to attack someone. He doesn't even know what the fuck it that's is. That's my he's point. Using it. But, but, yeah, but the point is that he's acting as if there's this one religion and group of people that mm -hmm. has control of the media and is using that media for nefarious intent. It's using that media to fuck over black people, his people. It's using that media to control narrative and it's using that media to currently in this point destroy his life. He's destroying his life. It's There's no accountability. It's it's, this is what he's doing to himself. What if anybody else said the things that he said about any other group, they too would be canceled. What I saw in that video that everybody's tagging me in is you saying that there are people that are out there trying to protect themselves from hate. 
You said, I would like black people to also do this when people hate on us. Uh, yeah. That's what I understood from that video. I literally, I literally said in the video that, you know, this was nine years ago. I do have a, a, a slightly different take on it now. But I said that, you know, I feel like we don't have an organization that has that kind of power. Like I, and I specifically mentioned the NAACP. Right. You know what I mean? That could write a letter to a company and demand something. But here's the thing. I might have been a little off on that because I don't even know if it's about the organization having the power. It's just the organization doing it. Mm. Because as Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a demand. Mm. I think that's the one thing that we're all forgetting about everything that's been going on the past couple of weeks. Jewish people organized and strategized. They had petitions. They had, you know, the Anti-Defamation League writing letters. They mm -hmm. had, you know, people like Ari Emanuel doing op-eds and different things. And they were actually asking for something. So mm -hmm. when you hear black people say, Oh, well, how come they didn't, this corporation didn't drop, you know, Kanye because of his anti-black comments? It's like, did we ask them to? Mm. Like, well, I, I wouldn't expect a, a corporation, I, I, that's got to be super confusing, right? If I'm a white corporation yep. and I hear a black guy saying something about black about people, black people yep. it's just like, hey, we, we can put the deal under review, but what do we do with this? 100%. It's like listening to black people say the N-word at the yep. job. It's like- 100%. What do we do? Yeah, it's not your conversation. That's all. That's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's easy to reprimand a white person for saying the N-word. You know that's wrong. And it happens all the time. It happens all the time. You know what I mean? But it's just like when you get that from a black person, it's like, what are you supposed to do? And then when I saw Kanye, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, compare his situation to George Floyd, man. Bro. He, he now he, the, the, he, the, he the now Jewish knows media's foot is on my neck. He now knows what it neck. feels like to have a knee on his neck. Come on. It's like, yeah, my brother, your man. knee is on your neck. How about this? <laughs> you know how, how about this? Yay. How about this? Adidas don't really have their knee on your neck like that. Mm. <laughs> this is all self-inflicted. Mm. Simple as that. Yeah. hundred percent. It's, it's, it's all self-inflicted. And I, this, this what I, and, and I'm gonna tell you the other thing. Mine is the, the, forget the Vlad TV clip. That was just, that's just people reaching, right? I saw them also uh, went, went viral from us talking about the fact when I said, you know, I hope that this is the time that Kanye actually goes out there and gets some real healing. Well, I, they said, you don't know if he's going to be here. Yeah, well, I said, I said, right. I feel like he's moving like a person who's not going to be here much. Yeah. Right. I hope that this is what it takes for him to hurt actually people hurt people like you always they, say, man. They do. And I, and I hope that this is what helps him to go find some real healing. Because clearly he's hurting, right? And um, I just I I don't see this ending well. I you know I I feel like he's moving like a person who doesn't feel like he's gonna be here much longer. You know what I mean? And um, how long? How much longer? I don't, I don't. I'm not. I'm not even doing that. Okay. Everybody's like, oh, you wishing death on Kanye? No, no, I'm not. Any psychotherapist, any therapist can look at a person and say that say, man. This guy is having a manic episode in front of everybody. You know, it's funny, though. I manic saw, episodes don't end well. I bro. saw people in the comments. I saw like Kevin Durant in the comments. Like, this is an awful conversation these people are having. It's like, yo, go do something then. That's, yo. Go do something why then. Why are we You out here commenting. Why don't you go call your mans if you know them and help them? Why are we What is your comment doing to help? Why do we love car crashes? Why do we do this? Yeah. Why, how come when we see something bad happening, we do this? Yeah. We do this. Why, That's all oh, we're doing. This is a horrible conversation. Yo. Bravo, KD. The way that you pointed that out. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. So helpful to <laughs> Kanye in the situation. So helpful to the Jewish community. What an amazing contribution to this people, catastrophe people, that we people, have. People are like, oh, that was a dis that's disgusting. What is disgusting about saying I hope somebody gets the healing that they need? Mm -hmm. And we're literally, I'm looking at a man who's moving like he feels like he's not going to be here much longer. This is what, yo, talk to any therapist, talk to any psychiatrist. We're watching a manic episode in real time. This is what they do. Yeah. They start self-sabotaging, giving things away, don't care if they lose things. And it's just like, we're, we're watching this in real Massive time. Massive impulsivity. Ma yes. And, and, and everybody's just, we're just going to sit around and wait until something bad happens to be like, Man, I didn't see that coming. Mm -hmm. Like this video right here, all of these people sitting around applauding him, going, yeah, Kanye, yeah, Kanye. Yeah. No, how about, yo, stop, Kanye. Kanye, let's go get some help, man. It's too much money to be made off of him, which is, I'm sure why he's so hurt is because he is this person that you can profit off of, and so many people have probably used him throughout his life. And he's choosing to pinpoint one group 
uh, with that frustration. But I'm sure it's not one group. I'm sure wherever he was, he was being, you know, quote unquote, used or taken advantage of. He's also one of the richest people in history. So I don't know how much he's taken advantage of. But I, I, it's weird to me, even when I hear him say, you know, we got to make sure these contracts are fair on one on, out of one breath. You're saying these contracts aren't fair. Mm-hmm. We need to see all the contracts. Mm-hmm. But then on the other breath, I was the richest black man in America. Yeah. So which was it? What about your artist contracts? Are those fair? They're big big Sean's that they weren't. That's what I'm saying. It's just and like, and, and be a his, change his you want to see, bro. It's his, bullshit. His excuse you, for that was, uh, well, I didn't run my label. It was a van. So then run it. You the richest man in America. Like, I don't know. my uh, Dude, the, he put out that long thing about uh, where he was going after Ari Emanuel, the guy who owns WME, and he's like, what are you going to do for the 60 kids that are no longer at this school anymore? How are you going to help the children? Like, Hey, Kanye, why don't you think about the children before you're spitting this anti-Semitic right. shit? Like, That's you right. have a responsibility to the people that work for you. You That's have the right. responsibility to pay your bills. You have a responsibility to your family. That's right. Once you get canceled, you're like, oh, you guys are so evil. You're trying to take it away from me. No, man the fuck up. Okay? Man the fuck up and understand that there are repercussions for your actions. His arrogance got the best of him. Wasn't it a private school, too? It wasn't uh, un- unaccredited. I don't know. No, but people were paying it. Yeah, you got to pay. You got to pay it. So us. if you make the decision to pay to send your kid to a Kanye West school, that's on you. But also, an unaccredited school. No, where Kanye a, doesn't have to pay like an, as a parent. I'm just saying. Like, yeah. An unaccredited school where the founder doesn't read. But guess what right. else? Yeah. Wow. So, but, guess, but, but, but guess what else? Yeah. He put out a statement. He put out a statement. And in his statement, it says, based off the decision, the decision of our founder. The school is closing down. So Kanye. So Kanye decided to close the school. And now you got like teachers and other people quitting because of the anti-Semitic comments. But you decided to close the school. So that's your decision. It's just yeah. like, it's just master manipulation at his finest, man. And um, well, I just see him starting to start to apologize. Then he backs off. But like the apology is going to come. He already backed off the George Floyd. It's, you know, he's so fucking manipulated. But look, but look how different he took the Ari Emanuel as opposed to George Floyd's oh, baby mom. Question the death of George Floyd. It hurt my people. It hurt the black people. So I want to apologize to hurt them because right now God has shown me by what Adidas is doing and by what by what the media is doing. I know how it feels to have a knee on my neck now. So I thank you, God, for humbling me and letting me know how it really felt. Because how could the richest black man ever be humbled other than to be made to not be a billionaire in front of everyone off of one comment? Can I say one thing about the George Floyd thing? Like, he knows that he needs the security blanket, the the shield of black people. So he looked at what pissed off black people the most, right? He's like, all right, it wasn't the Jewish comments. I don't got to apologize for that shit. It was the George Floyd shit. Hey, black people, I'd like to apologize for the George Floyd thing. I was wrong. Now I understand what George Floyd feels like oh because I God. have the knee on my neck. On, He's man. just saying Comparing whatever's going to help Emmett him Yeah, yo, like, yo, I just did a screening for Till this weekend, bro. Like, you're none of these things. George Floyd didn't make a choice to get executed by the state. Emmett Till didn't make a choice to get killed by those racist white people in Mississippi. Like you, the words that came out of your mouth were a choice. Yeah. You decided to do that. You decided to tweet that. And you decided to double and triple down on all of that. Yo, it's so funny. Like he thinks that he's like, and you see what's happening to me. Isn't this proof that they run everything? And it's like, I don't understand why he doesn't see that anybody that says hateful, bigoted shit has repercussions. Yeah. Like, I just explain to me another person that has pushed hateful rhetoric that hasn't been punished. I'm just trying to understand it. You tell me. Like, who is who is going, this is how I feel about the world. I, tell me. No, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't Some seen people it. would say Trump. I don't know if getting kicked off of Twitter counts as punishment or not. Trump, yeah. 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 Let me see. Trump was president, though. What um, was he saying? No, hold on. But what was he saying that was like this? Well, it wasn't directed towards Jews. I mean, a lot of people would say, especially like what he said about immigrants would be considered hateful, I think. What? what yeah. I, mean, but, I don't have I mean, it in my now fingertips. We're, now we're but, slicing it thin, but yeah. Okay, I understand how it, people were offended right. by it. What did you think about what I said on Vlad TV nine years ago, Chris? Um, I thought it was, I mean, I think I would say for starters, stay away from saying Jews run stuff. And I yeah. think you've learned that over the last nine years. I mean, I think we Definitely. talked about that on this podcast. I guess it was like when all that Nick Cannon stuff couple was happening. Years ago, yeah, mm-hmm. I used the same type of rhetoric a couple of, a couple of years ago. I actually said I actually said that um uh this this shows Jewish people have power, and I wish 
I can't wait till we get that kind of power right. because we can't even get the cops who kill us fired. Right. I yeah. don't know why that's bad. Well, when you talk to somebody Jewish, you will. Like when you talk to somebody and they explain I don't to you, my friends who are Jewish. They don't think that that's bad. Well, I mean, I guess I think there's an extreme sensitivity to wait. There's a difference between having power and being in control. Right. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. wealthy people have power. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they're in control, yeah. but they have the ability to make some phone calls. Like, for example, if a friend of mine who's not Jewish owns fucking AT&T or something like that, yeah. right? He might have a friend at a country club who won't let some asshole in because we found out that asshole fucking hit his wife. Yeah, so he yeah, calls yeah, the yeah. country club and go, listen, I don't want this fucking wife beater join our country club. Fuck that guy. And the country club goes, all right, I'm cool. He doesn't run everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think yeah, there's yeah. a difference between having power and running everything. That being said, I understand why Jews are sensitive because these are the conversations that lead to the dehumanization of Jews. So they're going to be very sensitive to when they're all positioned in this way. Do all Jews have power? No. Does the guy who runs Disney, is he still Jewish? Bob Iger, is he even still there? Well, he quit, Probably. Right? Yeah. Well, maybe it's just, does Eisner that... was Jewish. To who? Eisner, who was before him. Okay, Eisner. Right. He has some power. Right. Right. So there are individuals that happen to be. Yeah, I think the problem yeah. is when you blanket it. I agree. Are there dangerous fucking white people? Yeah. Are all white people dangerous? No. Are there <laughs> dangerous black people? Yes. Yeah. Are all black people? People dangerous. Yeah. Yes. No, fuck <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 But you know what I mean? Like, uh, so that's the the way that you're speaking about these people. I think right, all humans are dangerous in right. some way, shape, or form. We all have the potential to be dangerous. But yeah. I get exactly what you're saying, yeah. and I think that's the problem, right? Uh, that's that's what I've heard a lot of. You know, my Jewish I've seen way say, more anti-Semitic shit lately. It's crazy. It's crazy. Right? It's like, I saw and anti-black. Son, there was a dude that walked into Finelli's. This is a Dressed bar. Dressed as a Nazi. In my <laughs> neighborhood, bro. Listen, do you understand what the problem is? And this is why. Isn't that crazy? About that. This is why Halloween. all of these conversations. Al goes, it's Halloween. Now, now I'm. You're out of your fucking mind. No, 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 no. I don't give a fuck. That joke will get you fucked up I in 2020. That. Like, what would I have done if I was in Finelli's? It, I think I got to like pour a beer on that guy or some shit. Man, you better like, get the fuck out the way. Yeah. The motherfucker dressed up as a Nazi comes in there in New York City, dressed as a, I'm, I'm, if I'm Jewish, I'm running. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I jump in this motherfucker or something. I'm not, That's what I'm saying. I'm not taking no chances with this dude. In 2022, when you see all of this anti-blackness, all this anti-Semitism on the rise, this country is on the fast track to fashion. Prince Harry did that shit, didn't he? What? Yeah, yeah he dressed yeah, up as the, a Nazi. Yeah, the British have a weird fascination with Nazism and especially the royal family because they're really German. They're not even British for the most part. Mm. But that's a, that's a whole other thing. I mean, I think I said on here last week, I was like, I like to see the anti-Semitism. I like to know where it's at. I, I, I think I've changed my I tune. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not telling you it was tripping last week. Yeah. I told Chris it was tripping I think I got last enough. week. No. I got because enough, man. It's really interesting when you see how inf when right. influential people start pushing out the rhetoric, yes. it creates a confidence for the other people to come out and do it. I don't know if that guy's dressing up as a Nazi if this isn't happening in culture right now. No way. I, I don't no know way. if he is. <sighs> now, I also saw like a, one of those a digital billboards on the top of a building. I don't know where it was. Like, Kanye was right that about was in, the Jews. That was in some... Florida. It was the Florida Georgia game, I believe. Somebody fucking digitized that shit on the side of the building. I'm telling you, man, that's why everybody is moving the way they are right now because we are in a very dangerous time in our fucking society. Right. And we got, and everybody's doing this shit. This ain't just like people in, the, like public citizens. This is fucking people in government pushing this shit. Mm. People in government pushing this black, anti-black rhetoric, this anti-Semitic rhetoric. Like this shit is, yo, this shit is scary, bro. Very, very scary. Nobody got time to be playing right now, man. That's why I don't even understand. That's why I don't understand why at a moment like this would you even involve yourself in any of this shit. This is what I've realized happens a lot with people. There's a difference between when people agree with you and when they exalt you and when people actually believe in you as a person and they exalt you, right? So it's like anybody will exalt the person that they agree with. I mean, that's what's happening with Kanye yeah. right now. There are people who, There are people who don't like black people that are saying Kanye was right yeah. because he said that George Floyd was killed by fentanyl. Bro, you got black people who are supposed to be so pro-black who will 
use cognitive dissonance because you got to really go hard to ignore all the anti-black stuff Kanye said just because they dislike another community. Exactly. Even more. Like, how, how wild is so it? That's that you, how just, do you dislike a community more than you love your own? Well, I think it's more just like you're so used to not being agreed with, especially with famous people. And then finally, a famous person is echoing your sentiments and you don't give a fuck what that famous person looks like. You're just like, thank God this person is telling me I'm right. And yeah. that's what Trump did with a lot of groups. And that's what Kanye is doing with a lot of groups. And now he's backing that shit up because, you know, the money's costing him and the community is criticizing him. He does this all the time. I've told y'all this for the billionth time. Yeah. Whenever he's up, it is slavery was a choice. White lives matter. Hey, my presidential campaign is ran secretly by GOP elite just to take the black vote away from the Democrats. But whenever he's going through something, whether it's mm. beef with his ex-wife or beef with corporations, he's the most pro-black person in the world mm. and for whatever reason folks fall for it my all people the i need to look at my time. people the contracts need to be good for my people like it's unreal i I just i really truly just want him to get some help man because i i don't know what y'all seeing that i'm not seeing but i see a manic episode playing out in real time and manic episodes don't end well mm. without the proper medication my, 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 my therapist said it's a reason you don't see 70 year old bipolar diagnosis Ooh. They don't make it. Ooh. That's what he said. This is an awful conversation we're having. It's right not here. an awful nasty. conversation. <laughs> it's nasty. A, yeah, it's nasty. It's a nasty yeah. conversation. Hey, yo, we, we're real having quick right before now. we get out of here, because I got to go, but <laughs> why do we live in a world where it's easier to talk about conspiracies and a bunch of shit we can't prove or don't really know? But when we start discussing reality, it's a nasty conversation. That's what we were talking about before. It's easier to play. Wow. Play. We want play. We want make believe. We want things that aren't exactly real because they don't force us to deal with the reality of life. Then we talk about the reality of life, and it's like, oh, that's a nasty conversation right there. Wow. That's that's a horrible conversation. Think, when you think, talk by about the way, the reality things of life. we've seen. This yeah. is, like Kanye is not the first person we've seen having a manic episode. Like yeah. you, you, mental illness runs in your family. Yeah. Like mental illness is in my family. Like we've seen these things. Before we know how this ends, you and this person nasty, does not get help. You want to know what a nasty conversation is? Talk to me. A nasty conversation is going to be if something, God forbid, awful does happen to Kanye. And then we're going to have a nasty conversation about all them celebrities that were commenting and not doing nothing. That's going to be a nasty conversation. Wow. When we go about all the commenters, all the keyboard warriors, they ain't reaching out behind the scenes. They ain't trying to use their power, their influence to get that man help. Wow. Right, that's going to be the nasty conversation. Wow. It's a cop out. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I texted Charlemagne this weekend. It's like if if your words have that much power that you can speak these things into existence, speak into existence. Chris Morrow getting a brownstone in Brooklyn somewhere, <laughs> and then speak into existence ending inflation, and then you can cure cancer. Yeah, too. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, just yeah. like yeah. No, that's interesting what Chris said because people do say that, right? People be like, "Man, Charlemagne be predicting things." Or you know, I got friends that be like, man, don't say that because you be saying stuff that's coming true. I'm not no fucking psychic. It's patterns, bro. Yeah. Right. Like smart people learn from their own mistakes. Why people learn from the mistakes of others. We've seen this. If every day of your life you eat McDonald's for lunch, breakfast and dinner. And I don't know why I couldn't do it in order just now. Breakfast, yeah. lunch and dinner. Yeah. If every day you eat that shit and you don't eat nothing else, I'm going to say, show you're going to get fat. Uh... Does that make me a psychic? No. Well, it's not even a psychic. The implication is it wouldn't happen unless you spoke on it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 really weird. We re it's really dangerous that we're in a world where people believe conspiracies over just real fucking life. Yeah, like it's un it's unbelievable. Uh, let's do some asking idiots and get the fuck up out of here. I got time for two. What we got? Uh, Tangerik says, "What fictional world would you want to be made into reality for everyone?" Oh, what you got, Schultz? What fictional world would I want to be made into a reality? For everybody. For everybody. Um, uh, Wakanda, bro. Easy. Easy call. Because they got all the cool technology. Easy call. Yeah. Easy call. And the chicks with the cool haircuts. Easy call. <laughs> Easy you know call. what I mean? This Easy is, uh, yo, isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, all the technology in the world, they can't get uh, girls to grow their hair. They don't want to grow it. Oh, they're shaving it on purpose. Yeah. I would assume. I mean, oh. that's, that's the look of the Dora Milaje, and it looks fly as fuck. I can't wait to see Wakanda Forever. I, I might have a screening for Wakanda Forever soon. Ooh. Maybe sometime this week or next week. Um, they don't come out to the 11. But yeah, Wakanda. But no, Wakanda seems like a cool-ass fucking place. Easy I don't call. know. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Wakanda for me. 
The only other place I would even think about is Avatar, but I don't know if I want to be big and blue. I don't want to be all over there with the fuck. I don't want to be big and blue, bro. But Get out of here with all that. Did you bro. ever, did you ever, have you ever rode the ride, the Avatar ride at Universal Studios? No. Fucking incredible. Yeah. What about uh, Ready Player One? Yo. Yo. Yeah. That Ready Player One is crazy. Also, low key, like Harry Potter World would be kind of lit. Or <laughs> hell yeah, food looks trash. Say again, the food looks trash. Yeah, it ain't gonna be that good. Yeah, the food looks trash in Harry Potter World. Uh, and, and the crazy part is, if you go to Universal Studios, you can go to all of these places. Yeah, I, I went to Harry Potter. My, my my daughter and you know wife were impressed with Harry Potter. If you don't give a fuck about Harry Potter, you're not gonna be impressed by it. Yeah, but man? if you watch the movies and shit, it's cool to go there. Avatar was good. Having that goddamn big ass dragon between your fucking legs. Yeah, and you can feel it breathing on your thighs. And yeah. <laughs> nah, <laughs> no, no. Ready Player One is crazy, and I feel like that's not even that far away. But that was fire. I really like Ready Player One. Uh, w, we can end on this one. W K Nisha says, "What's the best and worst birthday gift you received as a kid?" Fuck you, yo. <laughs> Fuck you. You know what I went through as a child. You know all the Jehovah Witness. You know what I'm saying? You should have said get presents. Huh? You didn't get presents. No, we don't celebrate any holidays at all. No, shut wow. the fuck up, Taylor. Did you get a <laughs> Yo, that shit really triggered me just now. Taylor was like, oh, that's so sad. You didn't get a cake? Yeah. No, I didn't. Okay, Joe. Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate nothing. No yeah, birthdays, crazy, no bro. holidays, that's no crazy. nothing. Put that's really crazy. Y'all see me goddamn cry. <laughs> yeah. so, what about you, Schultz? Oh, my God. Say again? What was your best and worst birthday gift? God damn, I don't know. Best and worst birthday gift. I don't know. I don't remember them. I dead ass do not remember them. I I cannot remember the best or worst birthday gift. Wow. You yeah. got so many that you can't even fucking remember? Probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah, I truly don't know. Wow, that's weird. What about you, Chris? Uh, same one, I could say. I got a bike, uh, Ross bike with a banana seat which was popular in the 70s yeah that I desperately wanted it and i left it outside to run inside to get something and i came back and it was game gone. over salute to the jehovah witnesses there baby that stole that bike right <laughs> you know we were going to eat regardless you know what I'm saying? how dare y'all be out here celebrating the holidays with without us y'all know what we was going through as jw kids okay may god may jehovah forgive those jehovah witnesses that stole chris's bike when they, they were younger okay can we go now? Yeah, we can go. <laughs> As always, Bye, if you listen everybody. to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Hey.